I will provide a short brief about our new release of April 16. Uh, I will talk briefly about the situation in the United States, the global situation, and what's coming next from IHME. For the United States, the rise that we have seen in cases and deaths in Michigan is slowing down. Uh, although we have seen uh, increases in other states, uh, such as Minnesota, Pennsylvania, it hasn't been to the extent of what we have seen in Michigan. And we haven't seen the a rise in cases that uh, manifested in Europe here in the United States simply for several factors, uh, mainly three factors. One is we have higher immunization rates here in the United States compared to Europe. We also have had a higher infection rate here in the United States, so we have a little bit more immunity from previous infection than they did. And also the main important point is B117 uh, came to the United States toward the end of our season, winter season. So it helped us where it hit them earlier in their own season. In our uh, new projections, the total number of deaths from the beginning all the way to August 1st will remain around 618,000 deaths. Uh, we don't foresee a rise in cases or deaths in the coming months. We would expect it to keep declining all the way till the beginning of winter, simply because this virus is seasonal and we are rolling out the vaccines as soon as possible. The only concern we have as we move forward is, of course, variants. And we're keeping an eye on variants here in the United States and elsewhere, especially those who are escape variants. So we are very much concerned about that. But also we're very concerned about the rapid rise in mobility and the slow decline in mask wearing in the United States as states are opening up for business. And we believe we need to make sure that people are aware that we're not out of danger yet. All those things are going to be looking much better uh, throughout the summer here in the United States. Also, we are a little bit concerned about uh, hesitancy. It has been increasing slightly. We're monitoring hesitancy, vaccine hesitancy. And we expected that it will go up a little bit after AstraZeneca, of course, uh, posing AstraZeneca in Europe. And now as we posed uh, Johnson & Johnson here in the United States, that's even a bigger concern that hesitancy will increase. So moving forward, we need to deal with vaccine hesitancy. We need to make sure we remain vigilant, especially in areas that are still seeing a rise in infection. Uh, as a nation, we'll see a decline in infections, but we still have some hot spots here in the US and we need to be very careful, address vaccine hesitancy and keep rolling out vaccines. We expect uh, that in May, June, there'll be more vaccines in the United States than people are willing to take them. So as far as winter is concerned, we may see a surge of cases simply we have because we haven't reached herd immunity in the United States uh, because not everybody is eligible for vaccines. And of course, we have uh, vaccine hesitancy, which is increasing here in the United States. Globally, the situation is a little bit different. Uh, we see a rise in cases and mortality at the global level, and we are seeing a rise in cases to match what we have seen in, uh, in winter, about 700,000 cases reported a day. Uh, this is not, of course, the total cases out there, simply because uh, not all countries are able to do a good job in uh, detecting uh, new cases. And there are so many hot spots. The one that is of big concern is in Asia right now. We are seeing a rise in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Iran. Uh, due to limited testing of uh, genomic uh, sequencing of the virus, we have little information about what's circulating, but we know there is a new variant there, which is an escape variant, double mutation in India. B1617, which has the characteristics of the ones in South Africa and the one in California, and it, it's an escape variant. The increase that we used to see in Brazil in the past week seems is declining, but we need to keep an eye on it. Is it a function of Easter and a reduction in reporting? It's something to keep an eye on. In Europe, in many countries, uh, the pandemic is decreasing simply because of vaccination and seasonality is helping, but still there are rises in some countries in Europe. There is also a concern about what's happening in Philippines with a new variant P3 that's circulating there. Uh, as for projections 
uh, to August 1st, uh, we're expecting about 4.7 million deaths in, uh, globally. Again, the most important part uh, to address the pandemic everywhere would be to increase the vaccination, address vaccination hesitancy, help other countries uh, to vaccinate, and of course, reduce mobility and mask wearing, especially in the southern part of the hemisphere where winter is about to enter, where we need to contain the virus there. Otherwise, we'll have a surge coming up in winter on top of the surge that we have seen in parts of uh, Brazil, of course, and South uh, Africa. And the best way to contain the global pandemic is, of course, to keep imposing social distancing mandate in places and settings where we are seeing major variants and a rapid rise in cases uh, like what we are seeing right now in India or in Iran, where we need to impose some social distancing mandate in order to control the spread of the virus and allow for vaccines to take effect and be able to have that balance, especially in these countries when they're heading out of their pneumonia season. And we believe that COVID-19 is following pneumonia in terms of seasonality. So measures need to be imposed in certain places to contain this virus as we move forward. And the last point I want to make is what's next for IHME. At IHME, now we're spending a lot of efforts to have excess mortality, not what has been reported by many countries. And as you all know, in many countries, uh, there is no good vital registration system. And of course, with pandemic like COVID-19, there has never been good reporting of cases simply because the detection rate is very low. And of course, because of mortality is underreported. So we're accounting for all of this and we will be released sometimes next week, depending on quality check and our programs, uh, new numbers in the past about excess mortality by country from COVID-19, which is very important for us because we need to use that number in our global burden of disease, uh, GBD 2020, that we are working on right now. So it is very important for us to get the correct number of mortality from COVID-19 and also the disability associated from, uh, with COVID-19 for our GBD. We're also tracking all the variants out there and we're including them in our projections. Right now, the variant, for example, in uh, India and the variants that are in California as they are spreading, of course, the variants that are coming from the UK, the variants that are coming from Philippines, South Africa and Brazil. So we're keeping an eye on all these variants and we're also using data and places where there is a good genomic testing uh, surveillance for what type of variants are circulating. So we're using the spread of these uh, variants and how they compete with each other when they are present. So far, what we know is B117, the UK variants, when it is in the same location with others, it's taking over and it's the one that's spreading the most. B117 is not an escape variant. We know that the vaccines out there are highly effective against it. So in a way, this is good going us for going for us right now as B117 is kind of the dominating one circulating, but at the same time, that's a caution for all of us that we need to limit the circulation of the virus so we don't allow the introduction of new variants or allow the virus to mutate and we have a new variants out there. And the last thing that we are working on at IHME is we have more data right now that uh, immunity declined with time waning immunity. We will include this in all our projections right now. And that's very important for all of us since we want to provide decision maker with where we stand in terms of herd immunity, uh, in terms of both infections and people vaccinated. And we're taking into account the vaccine. We're taking into account in many places like in the US when there is a halt for Johnson & Johnson, we'll take that into projections and we'll make sure it's included in our projections. And if the situation changes, of course, we will include Johnson & Johnson back in our estimate. We're also considering at IHME releasing long-term projections. Right now, as you all know, our projections are for four months, but we've been asked by a lot of policy makers and decision makers that they would like to see a long-term projection for people who work in this kind of work. As you project longer into the future, the margin of error will increase. We're aware of that. And this is a dynamic model. We're building a lot of assumptions in it in terms of mask wearing, for example, mobility, the interaction between all these variants. But we have been 
debating what we should release and we have decided at IHME that we will release long-term projections after we fix the excess mortality and the waning immunity to help decision makers. It's very important, especially in the United States, since we are expecting a seasonal rise in winter here, we would like to inform the public that yes, if summer looks very good for all of us and we're close to a normal summer in the United States, as an example, we need to be careful. And again, mask wearing has to be a priority come winter. And the same for the Southern Hemisphere country like Brazil and South Africa, we need to provide them with a long-term scenario, including their winter, so they can better pre uh, prepare. And we hope that this will help with the distribution of vaccines, where we know where vaccines are needed the most and how we could allocate resources within a country and between countries.